Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about um, rifle setup for an urban environment. Uh, and we're, we're pretty much, we're talking about like a World War Three apocalypse type of situation here. We're not just talking about, you know, simple home defense. Um, so I think that the best rifle setup would be an AR-15 um, set up with a big window uh, optic, right? Big window red dot with a magnifier behind it, okay? Um, the reason for this is in, in, an, in an urban environment, we can expect that we might be shooting long distances because of the way that the streets are organized. Um, when I was at my mother's house, um, you know, basically I walked out with the, with the, with the, um, uh, with the range finder. I could get a reading out to 800 yards, you know, from, from, you know, to the right, right. And then to the left, I was, I was pretty close to a thousand yards. The only reason I couldn't see any further, uh, is because of the tree branches, over the street, and even though it was the winter time, and the trees were, you know, didn't have any leaves on them, you know, over a long distance of a thousand yards, you know, those tree branches kind of add up, you know, and also the wires and stuff that are overhead add up. So, so that was as far as I could I could see. But if you're like in Manhattan or someplace where the streets are a lot wider, or, or in some boulevards that are much wider, you know, you might be able to see like two miles. Okay, so you, you might be shooting long distances, but at the same time, you might be sh shooting. Uh, you know, um, CQB, right? You might be you might be shooting, you know, across the length of a room, which is maybe 10 to 20 feet. Okay? So you need a rifle that can do both really well. And um, uh, this setup does that, right? Because we can flip this off to the side and we got the big window. Let's see if I can line this up. There it is. We got the big window um, optic. I'm looking at this backwards, a uh, big window optic that will help us get on target faster. And even if we're off, right, we got, you know, even if we're in the edge, like I have it right now, you can still get your hits on target, okay? So, and then the nice thing is you can just flip this over, right? And now you've got magnification, so you can easily shoot to the max capabilities uh, of, of, of an AR. Now, you might say, well... If there's a possibility that we might be shooting at longer distances, you know, why not get some around that's more capable? Why not be shooting a 308 or 65 Creedmoor? Um, well, here's the thing: if 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 I have the option of having several rifles or be, being part of a team, right? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm gonna have at least one person in the group with a variable scope or with a long distance scope. I'm gonna have somebody in the group with a uh, with a round that is, uh, you know, that's capable of going out to further distance. But if I'm by myself, okay, uh, I'm probably looking for something that my, 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 the most, the thing that's going to be most important to me, uh, is the CQB capability, right? Uh, because somebody that's closer to me, right? Like in the same room with me is more of a threat to me than somebody that's like, you know, you know, three and four and 500 yards away. Okay. Um, so, so the first thing I need to solve is the CQB problem, okay? And this, this optic does that really well. What I find with variable scopes is that um, uh, because of eye box issues and, and relief issues, especially if you're, like, if you're going room to room, like trying to peek around corners, you know, with eye, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit harder to find the reticle. So this is going to uh, prevail indoors okay and then adding the magnifier behind it gives us the distance capability and the great thing about the magnifier is that at night or if we don't think we're going to need it we just take it off and we line up the rifle considerably right and then if we want it back on we just get it back on if i if i go with a with a with a very with, with an ar that has a variable scope on it i now am stuck with um you know i'm basically I'm, first of all i'm stuck with that extra weight i can't remove you know, part of the variable scope to line it up. And also I feel that I am at a disadvantage being indoors, trying to peek around corners, you know, so, so I, I'm definitely better with this uh, in close. Now, if I'm in a forest type of situation, that might be less of an issue because in a forest type of situation, um, first of all, I wouldn't want to be in a house because most of these houses are basically made out of like sheetrock um, so, so if somebody knows that you're in the house, because if they put enough rounds into these small houses that we have out here in the country, I mean, you know, I mean, they're, you know, they're going to get you. Okay. 
Um, in, in the city, which most of the buildings over there are made out of brick, you've got much better cover and you've got lots of buildings close, closer and closer. So in the country, I think I would rather be outdoors, right? So if I'm outdoors, uh, you know, maybe the variable scope might be the better option. But in the city, if I'm, especially if I'm working by myself, I think that the big window optic is going to serve me better. Okay. So, uh, that's my choice. Okay. My choice for a, uh, um, um, you know, for, for, for rifle. Now, wh why five, five, six, why not something like a six, five Creedmoor? Uh, main reason is with the five, five, six, I can carry more rounds with the five, five, six. I have more rounds. Okay. Um, I, you know, people, I don't think people typically buy six, five Creedmoor or three or eights, a thousand rounds at a time. You probably could, but you know, you know, but I know I got lots of five, five, six, that is primarily what I what I practice with, so I'm probably a lot better with it. I know what my holdovers are. Um, you know, I, I know what to expect from the round. So I I think I feel that um, I'm better off working with an AR-15 that shoots 5.56, five, and just knowing the limitations of my rifle and working within those limitations. Okay, so now um, let's talk about the range estimation because, like I said, if that's going to be really important in a city type of environment. Uh, because we might be shooting really long distances, right? Now, um, we, and I'm not, to, I'm not talking about shooting just across the street, right? From Because here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking like right across the street, there might only be uh, whatever, 75 yards from your, from your door to the door right across the street from you. Uh, but if you're, if you're looking diagonally, right? So if you come out of your house here, let me, let's say, uh, let me bring this down. So let's say you come out of your house, There you go. So if you if you come out of your house here, right, instead of just thinking about shooting that way, if you're shooting diagonally this way, right, or diagonally this way, with the range finder, I can I can first of all I, I can easily see 150 yards that way. Okay. Um, if I cut my angle a little bit more, I can also get to 300 yards really quick with just a, a minor uh, angle change, right? Like from there to there. I can easily get out to 300 yards, and and, I, and there's there's plenty that I can see there at 300 yards. And if I go even more shallow, right, like this, I can get out to 500 yards, right. So just out out your window, right, um, with houses around you at the same size, you can see 500 yards this way diagonally, and then you can see 500 yards this this way by diagonally, even on relatively small small streets. If the streets are a little bit wider, you're going to be able to see a little bit more. Now, if there's lots of trees along the edge of the street, right, because on some streets that I tested this out, I can see that there were lots of trees. Well, that's going to cut your vision down, you know, uh, in some cases, uh, you know, to, to, to you might not even, you, you might be able to see maybe 100 yards. Okay, So depending on how many trees you got there, um, you know, you might be able to see anywhere from 100 yards, but all the way out to 500 yards diagonally, right, if if there's if there's no trees there. Okay, uh, Now, if um, if you're able to get into a building that's higher than all of the other buildings, then you can see considerable distances. You're going to be able to see a lot further than your rifle can shoot, right? You, even, even if you've got like a 50 caliber, uh, you can, you will, you know, if you get on top of a tall enough building, you will be able to, to, uh, uh, to see a lot further than that, than that rifle can, can, can accurately hit. Okay. So again, that's why you got to know the limitations of whatever you're shooting. And you gotta be able to judge the distance. Now, one of the things here, let me tilt this down just a little bit. So, one of the things that uh, became very, uh, very obvious to me very quickly uh, as I was testing this stuff out is that uh, it's very easy to to lose your sense of distance in a city um, because, for example, out here in the woods, the, all the trees are most trees are about the same height. They're all about seventy five feet tall. Uh, I'm in. I'm in the woods a lot, so I'm kind of used to the tree heights. I've actually learned to measure the the, the the tree line on my finger, right? Right now, if you're in a city, buildings are very different heights. Um, so the thing that is going to be the most consistent that you're going to see like everywhere is passenger cars, right? You know, uh, there's going to be you know, even if even if a nuclear bomb falls, right? Uh, there will there will probably still be burnt out passenger cars all over the place. So uh, a passenger car is basically 15 foot by six foot, right? 15 by six. 
that you know so the length of the 15 feet the, the, the width going across bumper to bumper on average is going to be about six feet which all, which is also pretty close to the height of a man so that cuts down on some of the things that we need to remember so because we can expect that there's going to be cars everywhere okay uh that's the thing that we're going to use to range estimate um and again in cities you've got buildings of vastly different heights that can completely distort your sense of uh uh, of, of distance for example if you, if i went by the airport where they got they had these big gigantic 747 airplanes you know i mean 2,000 yards basically seems like 200 yards if you're looking at a very large airplane okay so large airplanes large airport hangars you know that can, that can distort your sense so passenger cars are pretty pretty standard right 15 foot by six foot um and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use we're gonna use the circle dot right that you saw in here I don't know how clear the image is going to be. There it is. We're going to use that circle dot to range estimate. It's a little too bright. See if I bring it down better. Can you see it there? I mean, you guys know where a circle dot is. There you go. It's a little too bright. Before. So that's what we're going to use to range estimate. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, by the way, this is the setup that I used in order to collect this data, right? Because I basically went around the city with a rangefinder. Actually, I found a park that was overlooking a highway, um, overlooking a shopping area, overlooking um, some some um, uh, you know some residential buildings, and this is the setup that I was able to use to collect this data. Okay, so this is something that you can do yourself. Just don't use a real an actual rifle. You take a rail. Right, and then you mount your scope on it, and this is what you can use. And preferably, do it on a day that you know that's not busy and you're not going to be seen because you know people see you. If the cops see you with something like this, you know they're going to re recognize that this is gun related, and they might think that you're planning something bad. So you just got to be a little bit careful of how you do this. But anyway, I've done the work for you guys over here. Um, so using the 65 MOA circle, right at 200 yards, okay, your the car, right when you Back of the car here, front of the car here, it's going to go past the circle, right? So the bump, back bumper is going to be here. The front bumper is going to go either to the edge of the circle or, or, or way past it. Does not matter. You know, once we establish that we are um, in 200 yards uh, with a 50 yard zero point of point of aim, point of impact all the way from zero distance all the way out to 200 yards or actually even out to 250 yards because you're only going to get like a three or four inch drop. Um so once we establish that our car uh, is as at least as big as this circle, put the dot in the center, point of aim, point of impact. Okay, real. This is really important to know because you you know that this is a shot that you can you know if you stabilize the gun, get the gun rested, you can you should be able to make this shot 100% of the time, right? You got match grade ammo, especially right, or, good, or even just decent ammo um, at 200 yards. You know every you know every shot should be hit. Now you may not be shooting at the car. You might be shooting at the bad guy next to the car. We're just using the car, you know, to judge our distance. Okay. So at 300 yards, right? So basically, the car is going to come up to about 75 percent of circle. So the circle. So the back bumper is going to go here. The front bumper is going to come out to about there. That's 75 percent of our total circle. Okay. So that's going to be 300 yards. Uh, that's something to just memorize. You know, again, even at 300 yards, these are shots that we that we can expect to to you know once we rest the gun, we can expect to easily take these shots and we can expect accurate hits. We just gotta know our holdover at 300 yards with the 50 yard zero. Basically, I'm putting the dot in the middle of the face uh, so that I drop them into the chest. Okay, um, so you just gotta know your holdover. But you but in order to know the holdover, you gotta know the distance. Okay. So if you measure a passion of the car from the circle to you know to to that point there, the ha halfway point between this dot and the edge of the circle, seventy five percent, right? That's three hundred yards. That's an easy hit with five five six. Okay, four hundred yards. Now we're getting more into the suppression fire territory. Unless you've got match grade ammo, with match grade ammo, I can easily make good shots at four hundred yards. So at four hundred yards, your the front bumper is gonna come. Basically on the just outside of the dot, right? So back bumper goes here, front bumper 
is going to come just inside that circle. It doesn't, and, and you, it doesn't matter whether it comes there or there or there. None of that matters. Uh, you know, you'll be close enough. You'll be able to, uh, to you know, to, to make those hits. You know, as long as it's not like up here somewhere, right? If it's up here somewhere, you know, now you know that you're at three hundred yards. You're not at you're not at four hundred yards. Okay, so okay, so um, you want to know your four hundred. It's, it's basically sixty percent of your circle. Okay, so over here it's one hundred plus. 75% of your circle, 60% of your circle, right? That's this line right there. 60, about 60% of your circle, you are at 400 yards. Your holdover, if you're shooting the man that's next to the, this car that you've uh, ranged at 400 yards, uh, your, your holdover is going to be to the top of the head, right? Top of the head, put the dot right top of his head, so it's resting on top of his head, and that should drop the bullets into his chest, okay? At 500 yards, right, you're going to basically... To be just inside the circle, right? So here we're outside, here we're inside. So basically, right about there. So back, back of the back bumper goes there, rear bumper goes there, front bumper goes there. That's going to be 500 yards. 500 yards. Basically, you take the length of your man, cut him in half, and that's going to be your holdover, right? So we take half the half the length of the man, half the height of the man, put that over his head. And that's your holdover for 500 yards if you're using a 50-yard zero, okay? okay? So it's going to be right there, just, just inside. So that's 45% of your total circle, okay? Okay, now 600 yards, we're getting into, uh, we're definitely get. I mean, we're definitely getting into suppression range. Uh, with match grade ammo, I can make good hits. With 77 grain match grade bullets, I can make good hits at 600 yards. Uh, that's going to be about 35 35% of your circle. So uh, the 35% of your circle works out to the halfway point between the edge and the dot. That's going to be 35% of your circle, or, or again, halfway between these two. That's just that's 600 yards. What's your holdover over here? Well, a little bit more than you had before, okay? So basically, I would say maybe take the full length of the man, hold that over his head. You're, you're mainly doing suppression fire, okay? You're, you're going to be taking... You're gonna take more than one shot, right? You're gonna if you're looking to do suppression fire, you're gonna you're gonna drop a lot of bullets in there. So some of them are gonna go a little high, some of them are gonna go low. You know, there'll be a little bit of a spread. Something should hit. Okay, so that's 600 yards. <clears throat> okay, 700 yards. That's gonna be 25% um, of your circle. It's gonna be someplace back here. Okay, um, so you know. You know, that's going to be 700 yards, okay? So, you know, if, if this was the halfway point over here, it's going to be half of that, okay? So that's going to be 700 yards. Uh, again, you know, you can use that to make some suppression fire. Um, you might also use this to know how much distance you, you need to travel. So if you're at 700 yards, you might say, hey, um, you know, I need to get whatever, 400 yards closer or 300 yards closer in order to be able to take good hits, okay? So you want to be able to judge the distance you know, not necessarily because you want to shoot it, but so that you know how far you got to travel or if, um, you know, you can communicate that information to other people or store it for your own, you know, for future use or whatever. So the 700 yards full length of the car is going to come to about 25% of the total circle. Basically, it's going to be pretty close to the edge over here. So if you're measuring a car length over here, it's going to be past, past this little line, right? You got these four lines over here. It will be well past that. You know, I would say maybe double the distance, right? From from you know from, from the, the, the whatever the, the the line is, maybe double. I mean, we're just estimating here, but it's gonna be it's gonna be on the edge over here on the inside, okay? Uh, Eight hundred yards. It's gonna be even closer. It's gonna be like fifteen percent, so it might be like touching this line over here. So again, we're using this information. To you know, to to you know, this is basically data collection, so we can make future decisions. Uh, Nine hundred yards, the car is going to be basically twice the length of this line here. So you got these four lines going around here, and this I've actually been able to measure repeatedly a couple of times. So this is pretty accurate. So if if, if the back bumper goes here, front bumper goes there, your car is going to be at about nine hundred yards. It might be a thousand, might might even be eight hundred, depending on the size of the car because at that distance you know it is kind of hard to get you know but if your car is measuring about the size of the length you're somewhere in that 900 range okay <clears throat> so that's that's the length okay so 
I made a note over here two times the uh, the two times the length. Oops. Two times. Yeah, let me rewrite that a little bit in case you guys want to pause this and take a screenshot. This is what I would recommend you guys do. So two times line. So yeah, I would recommend you guys pause this video at some point and take a screenshot of this information and you can save it for future reference, okay? Um, so two times the line, you're at about 900 yards, okay? Now, um, if the car is sitting diagonally, right, uh, what you would do is basically just 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 drop um, drop to the next level. So if you're at 600 yards, right, and you, well actually let's go to something like 400 yards because you're gonna be able to see the car even more clearly, right? As you get down here, we're doing more data collection, right? When you when you're up here at 400, you can get really accurate measurements. So if you if you measure your car from here to there, right, but it's sitting kind of diagonally, right? So it's, you know, then what you do is you just drop down to the next one. So if it goes from here to, let's say it goes from here to here, right? And you see that, okay, that's uh, that's 400 yards, but sing diagonally, then you just go up to 500 yards. Okay, so you just, you just, you just go out 100 yards, right? So, so um, I have it here, plus 100 yards, uh, if the, you know, distance if the car is sitting diagonal. So diagonal car plus 100 yards distance, okay? So yeah, same thing here, if you're at 300 yards, Edged, you know, front bumper to back bumper, the car sitting diagonally, just just move up to 400 yards. Now, it, there's a little bit, here's the thing, as far as diagonal, like how diagonal is it, you know, it, that's why it's an estimate, right? Depending, because because there's, you know, it could be, I mean, how diagonal is it like this or is it like this, you know, this, but anyway, so, but that's what I would, that seems to work pretty good when I tested it, uh, you just drop down to the next one. Okay, so now let's talk about the front of the car. So front of the car, being about six feet long and the average hyper man being about um six feet this is gonna you know this is this is good information here that can go back and forth okay so um looking at the front of the car at 200 yards right it's gonna go just past the bumper i'm sorry just just past the dot so so one edge of the bumper goes there other edge of the bumper there that's at 200 yards okay Right. Likewise, if you're looking at uh, a man, he's going to be from there to about there. So right, pretty much right up to the dot. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I have it down as 50% because that's a lot of times that's what it works out to. So basically at 200 yards from the edge of the circle to the dot. So if you're looking at a car, it'll be from here to there. If you're looking at a man, he'll be from here to there. You know, both are about six feet. Okay. Um, you're at 200 yards. You put your dot in the middle of the target, point of aim, point of impact, real easy, okay? Uh, if you're using a 50 yard zero, okay? Um, at the, uh, where are we? That was a 200 yards. At 300 yards, okay? Your man's gonna be at about 30, at about 35% of the total circle, okay? So that's gonna be like 75% of the distance from the edge of the circle to the dot over here, okay? So you're gonna be able to see a nice bit of white space it'll be close to the dot but you'll be able to see a good deal of white space over there so 30 again 35 percent of your total circle or 75 percent from the edge to there okay uh again you got to figure out if, how you want to in what terms you want to think about this um at 400 yards okay he's going to be at the halfway point between your dot and your circle okay so at, at 400 yards your man's going to stand from there to there. The car is going to be, one edge of the bumper is going to be here. The other edge of the bumper is going to be right in the middle there between your, the edge of your circle and your dot. You know you know he's at 400 yards. You use your 400 yard holdover, okay? It's this. Okay, and then at, at 500 yards, the bumper of the car is going to be equal to this line over here. And the height of your man is going to be equal to this line over here, right? So, uh, and I did this repeatedly. I, be, I was able to, you know, because of this setup over here, where I'm not actually pointing a gun at people, I was able to stabilize this on, on something, um, you know, and and actually match up people. And I can see that at 500 yards, people will stand, you know, will be as tall as this line over here, okay? And cars will be as wide as this line over here. So, 
if you don't remember anything else, at least remember that. Because you know, it, it, because you might not be able to remember all this data, but if you can remember a couple of key points, um, you know, you can kind of fill in the blanks. Okay, so ho however you want to do this, what, what I recommend you guys do is, uh, let me see if I can back this up just a little bit. What I recommend you do is take a a screenshot of this right there. Take a screenshot of this. And save it, save this information. And then, uh, you know, basically, you know, create some notes, you know, and, uh, you know, you can put on a, put on a little index card and you can use this as a, as a future reference. Okay, so um, hope this information was useful. Oh, um, let me also do this. This is my book. So here's the information. Here's all this information over here, you know, in case that's easier for you guys to read. A little bit. Okay, but what I also have on this side is if if I was using a, a, a variable scope that had mills, um, these are the measurements. Now, if you've got a mill scope, you you already know how to do this because you you know you already know what the size of the car is, fifteen by six. So you have mill lines. Uh, you can do the conversion, but um, I, I did the work here for you guys, right? So you know these are the yards going over here in this column. Over here is if you're looking at the car from the side, okay, those are gonna be the numbers in mills. Okay. Okay, if you're looking at the car from the front, I'm just gonna make that a little bit more clear. That's 25 right there. Okay. So if you're looking at the car from the side, that's gonna be these numbers here, right? From 25. 25 at 200, going all the way down to five mils at a thousand. Okay, over here, and then from the front. Okay, again, now these two columns match up exactly because front we got the, the car front is six foot, man being six foot tall. You're starting off at 10, and then you're going all the way down to two mils at 1,000. Okay, if you're looking at the, at the at the um, at the uh, you know the, the width of the car or the height of the man, and over here I, I also have the width of a man, okay, uh, starting from three mils, working all the way down to a half a mil at 1,000. Okay, so again, you can take a screenshot of this information here for future reference. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed this information, this video, and I hope this information is useful to you guys. Um, I actually had a lot of fun collecting this information. Um, I posted a prior video where I was actually out in the process of collecting this um, so thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all soon.